Hello everyone! Welcome back to episode 38 of my Let's Build series. It's so lovely to see you all here today. Lovely to have you. Hope you're all having a great day. I am personally having a wonderful day so far. I just ate a fantastic breakfast and now I am here in my survival world ready to record. If you guys didn't know, I usually record these early in the morning. It's just the time when I feel the most motivated and it's just, it ends up being easier. And this week I don't have class, so it's even easier again. In this episode, we are going to get some work done in this room. As you can see, I've already started by doing a nice prismarine trim around the top of our ceiling, and I added in these pillars to sort of light up the room so that we can see what we're working with here. This room, if you aren't aware, is going to be our ballroom. Next to it over here, we have our dining room, and our sitting room and aquarium are over there. On the other side of it, we're going to have our kitchen and some other rooms in the space that we don't have finished over on this side. Something that you guys suggested that we put in the ballroom is a big epic chandelier. And you all suggested this when we did these chandeliers. These are our little goldfish chandeliers. They kind of give the illusion that there's fish swimming in our ceiling and I really love that. It's kind of like abstract art in a way. I think those add a nice touch and they really bring the underwater theme up into our tropical palace. So I would like to do that once again in our ballroom, but this time we need to go a little bigger because, well, it's our ballroom. It needs to be epic. So I've brought some materials here and we are going to create a whale shaped chandelier. Now, I googled a whale chandelier, and I really, I don't recommend anybody else google that, because apparently that's an actual thing that people do with, like, real whales. So, I would like to make the note that this is not meant to look like a real whale. This is meant to be, like, art. Like, a statue of a whale. Like, it, it's, it's not real, you know? I feel like I shouldn't have had to make that note, but apparently it's a thing that humans actually do in real life. So, uh, yeah. This isn't meant to look like a real whale <laughs> just saying all right so we're gonna start with its backbone here i find this is usually the easiest way for me to start my organics um its head will be about where that dirt is and then coming back here with sort of a flat back we may curve that down a little bit right here and then right here we'll probably attach that to the ceiling once again like so and in the middle somewhere we're gonna have some sea lanterns like this to light it up that won't be visible from the bottom. So unlike with our fish, our whale is not going to have a sea lantern eye. Cause I just, I don't think the sea lantern worked super well as an eyeball in our fish. I mean, it, it did the trick, but we could do better. The first thing I'm actually gonna do is just build up some scaffolding. We're gonna have to be able to get a really good view of this whale from all sides. And we also have to remember that the main view is going to be from the ground. So it doesn't really matter what this whale looks like from the top down view. I have to try to keep that in mind as I'm building it because I'm not used to having things look good from one specific perspective. I mean, I obviously, I want it to look good all around, but it especially needs to look good from the bottom. Okay, I think I'd like to get the head in place first. I'm not sure if I built this too far forward or not. Uh, I'm really torn. We're gonna try it and see what happens. This is gonna be where the head is. Now, I need to build this out right here. And, oh, I almost fell. This right here. So it's kind of a little bulkier near the front and then it slopes down this way. And I also need to come down here. Oh dear. <laughs> In order to really make it look good from underneath, I'm gonna bring some of these lighter colored stone slabs up to the front and I'm hoping that'll kind of add to the effect a little bit. Though I do still need to be able to walk through here. Okay, there we go. Hopefully this will help, and then we'll drag it down here as well for the belly. Does that kind of look like a whale head? <laughs> oh goodness, this is challenging. I think we'll put an eyeball in place, and maybe that'll help us sort of visualize it a little bit better. Oh no, I'm already falling off my scaffolding. Alright, so for the eye, what I'm going to do is add these stairs so that they have a tiny little eyeball on each side, and then right here I'll add a sea lantern. 
and this will emit light over the top. It can't emit light through the stair, through that little hole, as much as that doesn't make sense. It just won't happen, it'll kind of look a little odd. So instead of covering that up, I'm gonna allow that to be a light source because we're never gonna see it from the top down view. So it makes perfect sense to just leave it like that. Now let's make this slope down a little bit more on that side. And we have to do the same on the other. Right there. Okay, I wanna get a look at this from the bottom. I know maybe it's a little too soon to be looking at it from the bottom, but I'm curious. Okay, so you can definitely see the eyeball from down here. I'm happy with that. I like the color difference right here. I think the next thing I need to do is the kind of curve of the back and the tail coming up over here. So let me get up and see if I can work on that. And this, this is one of those things that's really hard to do while talking. Something that I've had to learn quite a bit, and I think I have successfully learned a lot about it, is actually having to speak while doing builds. Like, you're, basically your brain is doing like two things at once. It's hard, it's hard to get used to, but I think slowly over time I have been able to get a lot better at it, especially practicing through live streaming and stuff like that. It's gotten a little easier, but goodness, when I'm doing stuff like this, it's still hard. It's so hard because I'm thinking so much about how I want everything placed and I want it to look right. Normally when I build like this in creative mode in a time lapse, I'm just silent. Like I'm just staring at my build in pure focus. <laughs> this is really hard, I have to admit. But I was actually watching one of my earlier episodes recently, episode three of this series. It just popped up because some people were commenting on it. So I was like, what? Why are people commenting on that? It's like getting old now. It's a fairly old episode. Um, so I went in and I looked at it and I was like, I, I'm even curious. What did I do in this episode? In episode three of this series, what were we doing? And we were actually building the enchantment tower. And that's just so cool. We had all iron gear. I mean, we had basically nothing to work with. And we were just building this little enchantment tower and I remember how much I struggled with that and watching it back now I'm like, yeah, I mean that was hard. It was hard to build that and talk when I was so new at it in episode 3. I think I've gotten better at it over time but it's really really cool to look back and see that progression. Ugh, it's so fun. So if you're trying to do a let's build like this and you're just starting out, Go easy on yourself with the voiceover. It's hard. It's really hard to talk and build, especially build like successfully. That's so hard. I mean, right now, like I'm talking about this, but I like this build could look like anything right now. I honestly don't even know. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna hop down and look at what we just did. The problem with multitasking like that is I'm never 100% sure if my sentence made full sense or if my build makes full sense. So it's like I'm sacrificing a little bit of both in order to talk and build. Both of them are a little worse. Okay, so that's not bad. I think the next thing that we need to do is bring these stone all the way across the belly. I think that's kind of what's missing right now. I, I mean, there's a few other things missing as well, but... We'll start here. I think I'll double up the stone slabs here and really sink down the belly a lot to give that a curve like so. And we need to do the same thing extended along to the tail. This is a really important sculpture to have in our ballroom. I want to get it right. Hey, yeah, that's getting better already. It definitely looks whale-like. I mean, it's not perfect. But it's better. I think I'm going to widen the sides a little bit and adjust that fin. And maybe flare out the tail a little bit more and curve this down more so it's less of a flat back. Yeah, I'm going to get to work on that and I'll bring you guys back once I have a finished result. Alright, so the silence and just pure focus I think definitely was effective. There's still a couple adjustments that I'm not super happy with like right here but it looks like a whale. So I think that's a good starting point. And it's nice and lit up. I really like the way that illuminates the ceiling, but we can't see any of the sea lanterns. 
So that works, that works. I'm happy with that. Okay, so now we just need to decorate the rest of the room because this still looks really empty. Let's be honest. Now, a very important feature of any ballroom is going to be the center floor. The center floor has to be open. We, the objective with this room is not to fill it with a bunch of stuff. It's to more so decorate the walls and have the middle area right here be like an open dance floor for balls, of course. That just, I mean, obviously. Um, so what I'm going to do in the center is actually grab some carpet. I thankfully have a lot made and I'm going to also grab some glazed terracotta. So I want this place to look very, very rich and royal and like, I don't know, super proper, right? Like crazy proper. So in order to pull that off, I'm going to have a really fancy rug near, oh, <laughs> nope, not right there, near the center here. This is not only going to look great, but it's also going to provide a great place to tuck some hidden lighting. And in order to have it look very, very royal and rich, I actually went ahead and smelted up some yellow terracotta to create some yellow glazed terracotta. The yellow glazed terracotta to me looks very rich, like almost like gold, like almost like we're just placing gold blocks into the floor. Here it is. Just look how pretty that is. Now, obviously, we're working with odd numbers, and glazed terracotta is an even number block if you're going to put four together. And I experimented in creative mode in a flat world with a couple different of the glazed terracotta patterns just to see what they looked like together, and I think I like the yellow one the best. So we're just going to kind of do a classic rug right here. And now that our rug is in place in the corners, um, let's just grab that in the corners right here. We're just going to position some glazed terracotta. Now I have to figure out, okay, that goes there. And this goes like this. And this one like that. So we get these lovely little corners like that. And I just love the way that that looks. I think that pattern is just, it stands out so much. I really love it. I wish there were even more options of glazed terracotta. I know not a lot of people use those blocks, but I think they're some of my favorites. Sure, they're not super useful in a ton of scenarios, but I mean, when they're good, they're good. So <laughs> let's just get these in in all of the corners and then surround it with some more of that um, wool. All right, so this is pretty cool, but I actually think I would like to tie in more of that yellow. So I'm gonna take out some of the white and place it like a square in the center. And then I'll have this be even more of that lovely yellow terracotta. And I'm just gonna alternate it back and forth like so. Oh, isn't this a lovely royal rug to have right in the center for a dance floor? I like that. I think it really fills it in well. And now I'm going to place a sea lantern in each of these corners. There we go. That really brightens it up. I think I can get rid of a few of these torches already. Oh my gosh. Did you spawn on that whale? How? How did you spawn on the whale? There's three sea lanterns up there. Oh boy, I'm so confused. <laughs> what? Okay, I've got to go check light levels. Hang on, I don't want creepers falling on my head. Why do I have a creeper problem in every single episode? I'm not liking this trend. Okay, light level. Look at these sea lanterns. There's literally three. Okay, where's my light? 13. Block is 11. Uh, this is all fine. What are the fins? 10, that's fine, and these are slabs anyways. Yeah, that's fine. What's this? These are fine, light level 10. Maybe it's up here? Uh, right here. Oh, six, right here. So just directly on the ends of the tail. Hang on, I'll fix. <laughs> Nothing can spawn here now. There we go. All right, glad we got that sorted. Goodness, there's nothing worse than a creeper falling on your head. Okay, let's get back to work. All right, the next thing I would like to do involves even more of this jungle wood. 
Around these pillars on all four sides, I would like to tuck in just some sort of fancy looking ends to the pillars down here. Now this doorway here may have to move, but I'm fine with that. That's honestly not set in stone at all, and we don't even have this half finished, so really doesn't matter. But basically, I'm just going to come around them like so and add in some of those little details. Something else that I notice when I look at concept art for ballrooms online is that they often have these very large windows and large draping curtains, big chandeliers, fancy grand pianos, stuff like that. Now, there's a lot of those things that we can't do because of the circumstances of our palace and the exterior, interior, you know, they have to look good together. But something I can do to add some decoration to the wall is actually add some big paintings. Not paintings like Minecraft paintings, but like custom paintings. Okay, there's the center. Now from that center, I'm just going to build up a nice little square painting. Now, of course, up here we're creating another spawn point. I have to try my best to remember this every time. So right here, we're just simply going to put a little sea lantern and we'll end up covering that up with some slabs and stairs. But for now, let's get a look at the shape. Hmm, that's nice, but it's a little narrow. I think I'm gonna go wider with it. Now in each of these corners to keep up with the lighting, I'm gonna do a sea lantern again, and then some slabs to curve this down. And then, of course, trap doors. Trap doors end up being a great way to hide sea lanterns. It's actually one of my favorite ways. I love jungle trap doors. Yes, that's so good and so royal feeling. I love it. Okay, we're gonna actually do the same thing down here with a sea lantern, just to stop this platform from being spawnable, but also to act like a little bit of a show light. So basically when you have these paintings, sometimes in galleries, you have these show lights on them. And that's kind of what I want to have this be an effect of. So we're just gonna curve this up like this. And now it looks like that light is just shining directly onto it. And we're gonna do the exact same thing, of course, up at the top. All right, I think that looks like a beautiful picture frame and it lights up the wall super well. But the next thing I need to actually worry about is the dining room, because we're actually gonna take this out and put our painting right here which means our dining room is also going to have the same painting this is gonna be kind of a cool effect obviously if we did end up doing the double thick walls here this wouldn't be a problem but i'm fine with these two rooms sharing a picture frame now i can't do quite as fancy of a frame over on this side but i can do one so i'm just going to quickly mark that in so here's what that looks like in the dining room and honestly i think our dining room really needed something like this on the walls so it's a win-win really now comes the fun part. I get to add some pixel art in there to look like a painting. Okay, so I have a lot of nature-y colors and I think I'm just gonna try to do a simple little tree pixel art in here. Just to start off, if you guys have any suggestions on pixel art that I can fit in these frames, I mean, we can definitely have more of these around the palace, so feel free as usual to add some suggestions. But for now, we'll go with something nice and simple. Honestly, I'm definitely not a pixel artist, but it looks like a painting, an abstract painting, but a painting nonetheless. <laughs> okay, some improvements can definitely be made, but I'm pretty happy with that. So let's move on to the next step. Okay, next on the list of things to do, I would like to add some more fancy chandeliers on each side of this whale. Um, basically I'm gonna just come out from the corner a little bit and hang them down. They're gonna hang in this middle area where we have a little bit of darkness there. Just to really make sure that we have everything brightened up. I think the theme of this episode is ending up being lighting, which is good because we definitely need that. And I need to include these practices in all of my other rooms. So this is good. Let's do two out and then right here, I think. I just don't want to be too close to the whale. I don't want to be too close to the wall either. Maybe one more. We'll go right there. Hey, that's not bad. I think a hopper right there would really help improve that sort of gradient though. So maybe when I have that supply, I may do that. But for now, I'm going to get the rest of these chandeliers in place. All right, so, so far as we walk into our ballroom, we definitely get that feeling that I'm going for. We're creating a lot of atmosphere right now. However, this wall right here, right as we come into the garden entrance, 
is very, very, very boring. And also has a weird shadow <laughs> that I can't get rid of because I can't hang another chandelier right there. It's too many chandeliers. I think five chandeliers in one room is my limit. So naturally, the next best option is an aquarium. I know we just did an aquarium, but honestly, why limit ourselves at this point? So I think we're just going to quickly mark out. It's going to be a super tiny aquarium, by the way. It's super flat against this wall. It's not at all round like our other ones, but it'll just sort of give that little bit of detail that I've been wanting, I think, on this wall. I'm actually gonna pop it at one more block. <laughs> so you can see this is a super tiny interior, but we're only gonna put a couple of fish in here and some corals. So hopefully it'll be perfectly fine. Oh, one thing I should definitely do is add in some sea lanterns right here and right here. And maybe in the center right there, just to light up the glass a lot. And it'll also allow us to get rid of a lot of the torches that are on the floor along here. Although, now that I'm looking at it, we don't actually have any torches on the floor along here. <laughs> okay, well, win-win either way. It'll light up the glass. Alright, so it's about that time where I begin filling the aquarium. I finally got it filled up with glass. I'm actually getting really low on glass, so between episodes, I'm going to have to get sand because it's getting a little bit ridiculous. But anyways, in the last episode, a lot of you had a question about why I was filling the aquarium the way that I was, and I thought I would show you real fast. So I think a lot of my audience is playing on maybe different editions of the game, like Bedrock Edition, or just in different versions and not 1.13. Basically, when I place source blocks up here, you can visibly see that this water is flowing downwards. So basically, this looks pretty filled in, right? But if we try to take water from here right now, we can't. And that's simply because these aren't source blocks. We placed water at the top and it's flowing down but kelp creates source blocks all around it. Whoop. I'm gonna drown, hang on. <laughs> My conduit effect doesn't happen in here. So basically, if we go up to this right now, when we break it and try to take water, we can, because these are all source blocks now. So we need to do this all the way along our aquarium and create lots of different source blocks. All right, so let's quickly just take out all of this kelp. I probably will add back a little bit, but I don't want all of it. And I think over here in this corner is where I'll put the bubble column. Now that we have this bubble column placed, I can simply come in here and I can breathe again. So wonderful. <laughs> it's really difficult to place all that kelp while drowning. I guess I don't have, I don't have respiration. That's what it is. I really need to get that, but I usually have my conduit, so I don't even notice. All right, now let's add in some of this coral around. Not gonna do too much, um, but just a little bit in spots, like. All right, so I think while I'm doing my coral decorations, instead of me just talking about how amazing coral is, I'll read the comment or question of the day. So we'll start in this bubble column. <laughs> Today's comment or question of the day comes from Joey Chin, who says, hey Jem, I think that some parts of your aquarium is still dark. Maybe you could build more fish chandeliers and jellyfish chandeliers swimming around the aquarium as light sources. I think that might be cool. By the way, congrats on 50k subscribers. Thank you so much, Joey, for the kind comment. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you for the congratulations. And thank you everyone else who has also congratulated me. I appreciate it so, so much. Ah, it's such a massive milestone to hit. And I, I'm, I, I'm in love with this community. Like literally you are all so amazing and kind i absolutely love reading all of your comments as for joey's idea maybe maybe i'll show you real quick just in case some of you missed the last episode joey is talking about our massive aquarium out here and you can see that although it is fairly light it still is dark around it in spots so i think we definitely do need to add in more lighting more floating chandeliers more coral in there there's improvements that can be made but it's not bad for now so thank you for all of your suggestions i will definitely be coming back to the comment section in that video to improve it a little bit later on anyways let me get back to work in here in our little coral aquarium right here this one's going to be mostly coral i think I kind of like the idea of having a lot, a lot of coral floating around in here and not quite as many fish. Oop. 
Better take a breath of fresh air. Oh no, I'm trapped in here now. <laughs> I better not put this coral here just in case a fish gets in that same scenario and can't get out. All right, so the final touch to this aquarium, besides for adding the fish, is actually going to be adding a little bit of a trim along the top here, just to extend our prismarine along and make that just fit in a little bit better. So it sticks out a little bit less. There we go, much better. All right, so I scrolled through the comments on the last episode and picked up a few names for our fish. Some of you actually suggested names and others, I just picked your username. The first one we have is Wally. I believe the full username is Where's Wally, but I decided to put Wally because that's what they signed their comment with. And next up, we have Skylar Clouds. I think that's a gorgeous name for a fish. And then Noob Ninja. I also think that's a great name for a fish because honestly, I do think fish would make very newbie ninjas, but whatever. And then we have Mia. I think this one was a requested name, but there you go, Mia. And last but not least, we have James, the beautiful yellow fish. Wonderful. So happy to have you all in my aquarium. Now, it's time for us to seal this up so that no fish can get out. I need to go grab my glass. All right, as a final touch to this side, I would like to add a bench as well as some of these lanterns with the planters. I think that'll add a lot to this room. So the bench is going to go right in the center right here. Um, we'll probably extend it out like that. I like bending my stairs in. I know some people do them the other way, but honestly, this is my favorite way to do it. So I think that'll work as a nice little place for people to sit. And then maybe like here, here. Okay, and the same thing on this side right there. And we surround this with trap doors. Yes, that definitely brings it together and it looks like a proper gathering area in here. I'm happy with this room. We definitely need some more seating over on this side, but I'm gonna actually leave this wall alone until I know for sure what's gonna go on the other side of it. So with that, I think I've ran out of time for this episode. I'm going to go spend some more time with my family and work on some stuff in creative mode for our 50,000 subscriber celebration. Thank you all so much for all of your support and love in the comments section. I really, really, really do appreciate it. And with all of that said, I will see you in the next episode. Bye bye.